Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, free BFT office hours. So, uh, in Britain 2020, we have recently held an election for the governing body, which we call so the core team would very, uh, like to invite you to a virtual town hall meeting. And we'll be, we had one session earlier to, yesterday, and this is the second session, especially geared towards the people from the other side of the world, especially from the South Asia or, or Asia Pacific region. So uh, if you have any questions, you can ask us in Google Meet, or if you are connected to the IRC channel on irc.tickshare.net in uh, FreeBSD channel, you can have your questions sent there. We will try to address as many questions as possible. Time permitting. So at first, uh, I will introduce our core members. Uh, and I'm here as the moderator. I am the coding secretary, Moin, here. So at first, uh, I'll request uh, Hiroki-san to introduce himself. OK, so hello. My name is Hiroki, Hiroki Sato. I have been focusing on development and supporting privacy communities in Asian regions for a long time as a project member and as a coaching team member. And uh, especially, I'm focusing on keeping in touch with uh, enterprise previous users uh, around the Japan, such as NEC and Sony. As you know, Sony is using the our previous Kuno and uh, PlayStation 4. And uh, so next generation, PlayStation 5 will uh, use the previous And uh, there is no uh, official statement and it's difficult to get the official statement uh, from Sony, but uh, I am uh, working with their uh, development team and uh, hopefully uh, we will have uh, make the relationship official um, between the, the their development team and uh, our uh, so uh, so development team and the previously project. But uh, unfortunately, the number of users are decreasing in Japan. So uh, uh, the new core team in the next two years uh, uh, will take uh, more leadership in the. Uh, project uh, various areas, and I agree that we need approach where improvements are needed to promote previously, and I'm happy to contribute to this direction. And at the same time, the coaching has understood the importance of the transparency. So this office hour is, is one of the, our efforts to communicate with the project members and the uh, people outside uh, project uh, around the world. So now I'm not sure uh, how many people living in Asia uh, actually listening to this, but uh, I'm happy if more people join to the project uh, or community, and uh, uh, we welcome um, feed your feedback. And the geographical and cultural diversity is important. Um, of course, the project sometimes have to deal with um, sensitive problems such as uh, terminology changes um, in the, our agenda uh, today. So I want to contribute such a, to the such a problem by uh, providing the point of view uh, as a person living in Asia. That's all. Thank you. Next, I would like to introduce Kyle. Kyle, please. Yeah, hi, my name's uh, Kyle Evans. I've only been around for a couple of years, but my general goals for this, um, for this term are to try to help improve our project's outward communication as well as make sure, making sure that we're uh, promoting a good development environment and um, doing doing the right things for recruitment and whatnot. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, next, I would like to introduce Mark. Mark, please. Hi, um, Mark. Um, I've been working on previous I've had a source commitment for um, <clears throat> around seven or eight years now, and I've spent basically my entire career working for one of several FreeBSD vendors, meaning uh, companies that make an appliance using FreeBSD. Uh, the past couple of years have been doing uh, some contracting, so working with yet more such companies. Um, so as, as a core team member, I'm interested in uh, you know, trying to bring the concerns of such vendors to, to the FreeBSD development team. Um, and I'm also uh, quite interested in uh, recruiting new members, um, or new, new developers to the project through the FreeBSD Foundation and through GSOC, I've had the opportunity to work with a few with a few students, um, and uh, you know, uh, 
uh, a lot of them are quite enthusiastic, but, but it's, it's quite easy to get lost in, in FreeBSD development if you're a newcomer. Um, so there's, there's a few things I'd like to work on in that area. Thanks, Mark. Next, I'd like to introduce Scott. Scott, please. Yeah, hi, my name is Scott Long, and I've been a committer for almost 20 years now and been a FreeBSD user uh, since 1992. And um, I've worked for various technology companies that use FreeBSD. Uh, currently work for Intel now. And my goal with being on core is to um, help with communication and help rebuild the trust in the community uh, and basically make FreeBSD be interesting and viable going forward uh, for new members and for existing members. So, thank you. Thank you, Scott. Next, I would like to introduce uh, Sean. Sean, please. Hey, um, Sean Chittenden, uh, incumbent, I guess, or returning uh, core team victim, whatever. Um, I'm mostly interested in um, working uh, to represent kind of the, the what I'll call corporate interests and, and commercial interests that are trying to use uh, a BSD project uh, at the base of either their business for hosting purposes or for appliances. Um, mostly interested in friction um, and doing what we can to make sure that that projects, um, workflows, and processes are aligned with how companies develop and, and ship their software. Um, we were one of the first out of the gate with you know software, uh, large scale software, uh, and became kind of a model. But we need to continue to innovate and stay abreast with what the rest of the industry is doing as modern software practice. Thanks, Sean. Next, I'd like to introduce Warner. Warner, please. I'm Warner Walsh. I've been a FreeBSD committer for a long time, uh, using FreeBSD almost as long as Scott was on um, the first elected core team for a little while and took a break and came back. Um, I've been focused on um, improving uh, course communication, um, making it less secretive. Um, in the last term, and I hope to do some improvements with that, uh, as well as um, uh, dealing with different conduct issues um, in the past. My goal also is to, uh, I guess, uh, help reduce friction and to uh, modernize uh, FreeBSD's um, practices, tools, and attitudes to help us um, be more competitive and more efficient with the resources we have. And that's it. Thanks, Warner. Uh, we have three more members who are actually uh, Baptist Darusin, Ed Mustay, and George Nebel Neal. Unfortunately, they couldn't join this session, but they have joined the previous session. So now we'll go to the brief discussion about some, our, some of the our other agendas. So at first, we'll discuss about the proposed terminology changes, which uh, Recently, the prior core team has sent out a proposal about uh, shifting a language based on some subtle changes. Uh, Scott is going to discuss about this topic. So, Scott. Oh, thank you. Um, so, before I start, I wanted to say something about uh, audience participation. We have the IRC chat and the Google Meet chat. Um, if you have any questions pertaining to the topic they were talking about at the time, please. Uh, Please, please enter those, those questions in and we'll go to them. Um, if you have more of a general question, like I see someone uh, post on the RC channel a question about what to make the uh, project easier for new people to be able to build a career around, uh, we'll address those at the end of the, uh, of the regular sessions when we do just general uh, Q&A. But anything that's, that's topical for, the, for what we're talking about at the moment, please feel free to speak up and we'll try to get, your, get to your question. Um, so with that said, um, I wanted to talk, uh, start a discussion about uh, the terminology changes in FreeBSD that were discussed in email a couple weeks ago. Um, as many of you might remember, there was a very emotional email thread on the developers list um, among the, the developers about a email that, core, that the previous core team had sent out right at the end of the term um, suggesting uh, uh, that terms like master and slave, um, black and white, uh, have um, 
you know, their, their, their meaning and, and their emotions have changed over time and that the project wanted to review those and encourage developers and members of the community to, to adopt more neutral terminology. And, you know, like I said, it was a very emotional discussion from a lot of people. Um, and one thing that the new core team learned from it very early on was that we need to be more transparent in how we communicate and we need to involve the community early, earlier on in some of these communications and discussions. Um, the intention for that, that message from the previous core team, as my, my understanding though I wasn't part of it, was that they weren't trying to dictate a strict set of, of rules. It was more throwing in their, their support for other people that would be wanting to make those changes. Um, you know, another big factor is that we have to, we as the 3BC community have to understand that we have responsibilities to our downstream users who may want to make a product out of FreeBSD or use it in a diverse environment. And we also have to work uh, with our upstream partners, you know, LOBM or um, hardware manufacturers. And those entities are also changing their terminology as time goes on. Um, and alongside that too, you know, we should also recognize that projects like Twitter and Linux have recently, recently announced that they are going to be proactively changing some of their terminology. So from the sake of inter interoperability in our communities, for the sake of inclusiveness and recognizing that, that some of this terminology is not as, as neutral as it used to be, um, we, we want to encourage an open discussion about that. We want to encourage the, the community to be mindful of those kind of things. But at the same time, we, we're not laying down a strict law that, you know, everything's going to be changed. We're going to write this complicated, you know, search and replace set script and, and force it down for everything. You know, it's more that we want to, we just want to recognize the, the changing environment. We want to, and we want to show support that, that, uh, um, you know, we want to be responsible in, in, in inside and outside the community. We want to be supportive. Um, so yeah, uh, so, you know, there's, we also need to recognize too in our community that as we, you know, as time goes on, um, we're getting more from upstream, whether it's, you know, maybe LLVM and those, those kind of changes are going to come in whether we want to or not. Um, likewise, uh, power vendors are going to be, you know, are starting to talk about changing their terminology, things like, um, SMBus and, um, I square C, there's talk about the terminology changing there. You know, a lot of vendors can be changing the terminology as, as time goes on, so we need to be ready to react to that and be supportive of that too. So um, that's kind of the, the, the background of that whole discussion. And um, but like I said, it also highlights you know, a lesson that we learned early on is that we need to be more open, uh, more proactive in the community. We need to um, help the community understand that we're, we're there to we are, we're here to facilitate the success of the community, not tell the community what to do. So in that respect, that's why we're having office hours today and hopefully, you know, on a regular basis after this. Um, and we'll talk about some more initiatives uh, later on this meeting that we're, that we're going to be looking at. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the, the main idea there. So um, looking now to see if there's any questions. Um, I see, I was there, I'm looking at the IRC. It says, I guess some people are having a hard time hearing me. Can you hear me okay? You're a little quiet, but I can hear you. Okay. Sorry, I should have listened Let me see if I can adjust that at all. <clears throat> One of the points that was made this morning was um, we're trying to keep um, FreeBSD's attitudes and mindset in sync with societies as a general race. And one of the points that the previous core team wanted to make by sending this out proactively was to let people know that, you know, there may be a mismatch here, at least, you know, some people may have, um, uh, you know, different expectations than where society is going and to try to get the conversation about, you know, how do we as a project deal with that and how do we get a jump started and all of those things going. So FreeBSD, um, the attitudes in, inside the project also evolve as society evolves so that we don't become uh, an outlier because of our attitudes. 
either um, you know, on the cutting edge, which we're not, or on the trailing edge, which we're not, depending on your point of view on this issue. We want to be, you know, in the center of what, uh, you know, different mainstream companies are doing, which is why Scott was highlighting that, you know, Linux and LLVM and Twitter and all those guys are doing these things. It's something we should, at the very least, have a conversation about because it's something that's relevant that's happening in the industry. Scott, do you want to do a sound check now that you've... Uh, Fixed your sound issues? I don't know if I fixed anything, but can people still hear, still hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. All right. So that's about all I had to say about that topic. Um, other than, you know, going forward, we're going to be looking for more community input on uh, what people feel is acceptable and, and where they want to see this go. Um, you know, whether we do need to make a big sweep change to the tree or whether to let it kind of change organically. Um, so, so yeah, so we're going to keep that discussion going in the community, talk about more in the core meetings that are open and help facilitate the community to be ready for these changes and be, um, be positive towards it. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Warner, for your insights. So, uh, till now we don't have any questions, so I'm moving towards the next topic. So, uh, as an open source, uh, Project FreeBSD is actually a huge project and very large project, comprising of people from around the world. So we have our own uh, hardware and own clusters and devices to be administered. Besides that, we have to take care of the uh, security. So uh, we have got lots of teams within ourselves. So we are going to talk about recruiting for project teams, and uh, Mark is going to discuss about it. Mark, please. Hi. Um, yeah, I just wanted to talk at a high level um, about the, the various teams within the project. So of course, we have the uh, the core team itself, which is actually somewhat unique in FreeBSD in that its members are regularly uh, turned over. So every two years, we have an election and new members join. Uh, there's a number of other teams within the FreeBSD project. So Moy mentioned the, the cluster administration team. So we have a, a bunch of hardware servers that are used to run various project services. There's a team that manages that. There's a team that manages our response to reports of security vulnerabilities. Uh, there's a team that manages our continuous integration infrastructure um, and, and you know a number of others. And uh, a, a common pattern that I've observed and, and I think quite a few people have observed in, in those teams is that um, you know initially some some small group of people will will lead them and will do lots of useful work and then over time you know their their interest diminishes for for whatever reason and uh, the team ends up uh, becoming somewhat stagnant um, and, and effectively turns into a bit of a block hole. It becomes difficult to to find out what their goals are, what their problems are. Um, it becomes difficult to join those teams as a newcomer. Um, so. During the core 11 term, I think we're, we're going to be spending a fair bit of time looking at ways to proactively avoid those kinds of situations. Uh, so some teams end up, and I, I, to be clear, I don't mean to point fingers at anyone in particular. There's lots of reasons that uh, it's, it's easy to become uh, less engaged with the project over time. Um, but for instance, I note that you know, Lee Wen's uh, taken the initiative to send out a, a CI status report every week, and I think that's done a, that's done a quite a bit and, and keeping people up to date on what the, the CI team is actually working on and, and you know, what, what, the, what their daily work looks like. Um, so a few things we could do for, for other teams would be to you know, be more proactive about sending, sending status updates, communicating uh, the team's goals and problems, and also uh, you know, documenting the processes. Um, these are all areas that, that various teams do to some extent, um, but, but there's no real standard approach to it and there's there's no um, there's no real accountability so things end up slipping through the cracks rather easily um, so that's that's you know as far as as far as this session goes I, I just wanted to kind of point out that we're we're aware that this this pattern this problem exists um, and, and it's something that we'd like to we'd like to address more proactively um, and so of course one of the 
one one area is going to be in recruiting new members for some of these teams, which haven't had haven't seen any new members for for years. Um, so that's something that the, the new core team is going to be actively involved with. Did anyone have any questions on specifics or, or any of the details of, of what I was talking about? Mark, I think we have got a question from IRC. What can the project do to make it easier for new people to be able to build a career around free BSD, like the way you are doing? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's difficult, right? A general question for the end, not really about the Teams thing. Yeah, I'll, I'll think about that a little bit, and then and then we can come back to that at the end. Because I mean, it's it's uh, you know a complicated question. Okay, thanks, Mark, for your insights. So, as we don't have any questions, I will move forward to the next topic. So, the next topic is about uh, core to do list publishing. So uh, the core team, the core 11 team has decided to start publishing about our to-do list and this will be done beside the normal meeting minutes and uh, other monthly reports or quarterly reports we send to the community. So uh, and besides that, we would like to actually hear from the community about like if you have any suggestions to improve our communications with unity around the globe. So uh, if you have anything to uh, suggest, please uh, write us a mail to core at freebsd.org. Uh, I'll just uh, request Scott to discuss about this topic, please, Scott. Okay, um, so another part of being open is that uh, while the core team in the past has published meeting notes and um, uh, basically synopsis of, of, of decisions, um, we wanted to recognize that we, there's a lot of things that we talk about in the core meetings that sometimes don't make it to those They'll make it uh, outside our our own discussion, and um, or if they do, it takes a long time to do. We keep a to-do list of some of the items that we do talk about from meeting to meeting. And one thing we're going to start doing is publishing that to-do list as we update it. Uh, we hope to have that ready to go for tonight, um, but unfortunately, there's there's still some things on the to-do list that deal with maybe personal issues and out of uh, desire to be respectful and and be uh, compassionate. We don't want to uh, publish that too quickly. We need to we need a little more time to uh, kind of uh, just go over that list one more time. But so our intention is to do that relatively soon, hopefully within the next week. And then um, yeah, basically open a, a big window into how we're doing business, the kind of things that we that we discuss in in your real time and encourage, once again, more discussion and input from the community to do that. So um, I apologize for not having that ready yet, but it'll be ready soon. So any questions? I think we don't have any questions so far. Uh, thanks, Scott, for the insights. So I'll move forward to the next topic, which is about the survey results. So uh, we conducted a community survey result, community survey for our project, and Sean is going to discuss about the uh, preview of the results. So Sean, please. Yeah. So last year we did the 2019. This year, obviously 2020. Um, last year's survey results was really helpful for kind of inform a lot of course decisions and, and kind of conviction for us making the, the switch to Git finally. Um, it, it, when we looked at the data, it was painfully clear that there was basically a, a holdout group of, of folks inside of the project. Um, but you know, the data was there, and it was very universally supportive of, of the transition to Git. So we did um, this year's data. Um, I can't send out like just a link to it. I have to go in and pull that information out and and put that into like a yeah you know, um, a Google presentation or something like that, and we'll share it and chop that with the community. Um, but there wasn't a huge, you know, uh, there wasn't a huge variance or surprise in the data that we had this year versus last year. Um, there's certainly some interesting conversations um, that can be had as we kind of look at the data about what does it mean to do collaboration and um, um, for some of the hosting bits. Um, you know, there's a little bit of, of surprise from folks about the amount of, of laptops and desktop usage that we have for some folks versus uh, relative to the amount of server um, workloads that we have. 
Um, it, you know, Spark 64 is already being shepherded out. That was kind of a running joke almost last year, but um, it, not a lot of, of surprise, I guess, in the data, um, but it's really good. And, and it's uh, it's going to be interesting to watch some of those data points begin to, to move from year to year to figure out where we've got hotspots um, or things that we need to pay attention to as, as a community. Um, certainly there's a, there's a lot of usage and interest in how do we manage Etsy for in-place upgrades um, and what's the right way to do packages and package management. Um, obviously a lot of folks, uh, certainly probably people that are on this call are big users of Podre, but a lot of people also just use packages that come straight from the project and um, that's their, their preferred mode of consumption. So. Um, not a lot to learn, or, or not a lot to, not a lot of surprise there. A lot to potentially learn in, in different areas of the project. I'm, I'm sure have different pieces that they'd be interested in. So um, we'll get that out here shortly. Um, last year with BSD can happening in June, it, it acted as a pretty good forcing function to get all the data out the door. Um, this year we've had some unexpected geopolitical worldly events that have uh, reprioritized a few things for us. So. Um, stay tuned, but yes, we do have survey results and, and uh, good findings out of that. Uh, happy to answer questions about it uh, if there are any specifics. I think I'd seen questions uh, elsewhere about last year's results. I think they only got published at BSDK and they hadn't been uh, summarized in any form for public consumption. I think we pushed a yeah we did I thought we did put a PDF up of the slideware from um, last year's core uh, core presentation but um, I don't know if we did every single question I guess um, we do have that data available still so we in theory could do that and compare last year to this year um, I certainly would be interested in people reaching out to me to help out with that because um, that's something that I think just needs to be a project you know annual responsibility kind of a thing where we need to have like a small group of people, like a survey working group of sorts, or just a team that is responsible for pushing submit or send on the survey once a year and, and maintaining that and kind of curating it. Because, you know, at some point in time, we're going to figure out that merge master is not the thing that we want to be using. We don't need to pull on it or IPF, um, you know, as, as a different example, I know people are working on some of that stuff, but like it's, it's a small percentage of our community. And so, you know, we can remove those options, I guess, is just a survey. Somebody has to do survey maintenance. That's really the point I was trying to make. Um, I had a question, Sean. Is there any large yeah. change from last year to this that's worth highlighting, or is it about the same? Um, I'd have to go look. I, the numbers are a little cold. In my, I remember looking a couple weeks ago, and nothing, nothing substantial stood out. Let's put it that way. Um, the... The number that I was looking for, I guess, this, this may be, uh, the number that I was looking for that was really interesting was um, the number of people that, that were interested in collaboration suites for doing software development. Um, as a community, we were very hostile towards um, external services. And as a project or a community, we're warming up to that. And so uh, that's been an interesting shift, but it's, it's not like you know a clear mandate, but things are very much headed in that directory. There's there's definitely a trend. So was there a I, big I saw that. change in the the number of people taking the survey? Yeah, um, we had almost a third fewer people taking the survey this year versus last year. Our completion rate was higher this year. Um, I think we were at eighty five percent completion, which is pretty high like you know when we did the initial survey we were pretty hesitant given the number of questions um but there was so much input from different people and di looking for specific things out of the survey and all said and done like the stats are it's a 12-minute survey um on average i know that some people it took longer to complete um but our completion rate was really high so we've got a, a very committed you know motivated community that stuck through what you know I think everybody here would say is a long survey um, and actually ran it through to completion, which is fantastic. Like I, I think the data in there is very good and by and large. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Maybe a question for later is also thinking about how we get that survey to the people that we maybe don't communicate with as often and how do we yeah. find those people in order to get information in front of them? Well, and one of the things that we you pointed out when we were talking about this, this uh, as Core 10 was the timing for podcast recording and potentially promotion to advertise the, the 
fact that there's a survey like we actually didn't get one of the big so this year we got B, uh bsd now in the survey but <laughs> but, but we didn't use bsd now to promote it um right. last year we, we used bsd now to, it was one of the advertisements or one of the avenues that we used to promote the survey um and this year we didn't this year had covid um and so you know very different kind of like normal channels by which we would kind of push this um we basically had hacker news announce twitter and a handful of like you know emails that went out and some of the some of that's also probably novelty uh, last year was the first time we'd ever done this this year you know more of the same kind of a thing and, and so there's less interest in taking it because people would seen it so that's also you know what are important questions to keep what are important questions to cut yeah, because um, it's been so a, we'll figure that out. a question for myself about even just promoting these office hour kind of town hall type things is how do we get the message to the people that we're not already talking to? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Herky, you had something there? Oh, uh, yes. So I'm interested in it. Do you have uh, data about the geographical distribution of the uh, people who answered the survey and the difference between the last year and the, this year? Because the, I'm interested in the, in the distribution of the user base. Yeah, so we do have some amount of that. Um, we're trusting it in like, you know, kind of like basically we have, a, we have I think, the country. IP address, like because of the IP address, we have the country that the, of the user. Um, so obviously something that could be defeated by a VPN, but from a you know statistical perspective, it, it's you know meaningful. Um, um, I do have the numbers for that in particular, and we can go and look at that. Way too much data there, and to be honest, I didn't pay a huge amount of attention to it. Um, I do do remember a handful of standout countries in Europe that had way higher usage than I was expecting. Um, mm -hmm. Netherlands and Germany in particular um, really were out there as you know as, as far as like big communities um, uh, more so than I expected I guess um, but um, kind of the usual suspects and and, and kind of like breakdowns based off of population so um, yeah I can get that to you yeah okay thank you Other questions? Otherwise, I think we can move on to the next one. I think we don't have any Come questions, back. but uh, thanks to Sean and Scott for, for your insights. So next, we are going to talk about uh, our kit transition. So if you're not aware, FreeBSD has a plan to move away from subversion to Git to bring more, much more collaboration from uh, the developers community and the other upstream communities. So, uh, Warner is going to discuss about this topic. Warner, please. Yeah. So, um, in the last quarter, team, uh, we decided that Git was the only viable um, path forward for the project for a number of reasons. Um, there was a lot of support in developers. Um, none of the other alternatives were um, had anybody willing to work on them. So we kicked off a uh, transition team to uh, study what needed to be done, figure out the best way to um, make the next um, <clears throat> make the Git transition uh, as painless as possible, and also start to realize some of the benefits that we have being in Git. Most of the collaboration tools for uh, code review and continuous integration um, and pre-commit reviews and so forth um, are more focused on Git. Um, Subversion was also dying. Um, uh, Apache is no longer using it, although they're still maintaining it for now. So the writing was pretty clearly on the wall. We needed to move to something, and, and Git was the only um, alternative. Um, so we've uh, we've created a transition uh, repository, which is um, uh, cgitbeta.freebsd.org. There's a silent dash in there um, that uh, we've uh, the, the group has published so that people can start experimenting with the uh, repository. We've uh, translated the history uh, with some uh, fixes in prior translations that were, were easy to do. Um, and we're planning on having a bit of a phased approach. The first phase um, is basically a great leap sideways, if you will, where we 
take the processes that we have today and translate them uh, to Git. Now, some of them are simple. Well, you type this command instead of that command, um, which will document. Um, and some of them are a little bit more complicated, particularly for vendor branches. Vendor branches don't really fit the way we've been doing them, don't really fit well with the Git model. Um, they fit better with having multiple repositories and doing subtree merges. So we'll be documenting how to do uh, all of that. We've started a uh, Git guide um, for people that um, want to give feedback. It's a little bit rough right now. Um, but uh, sorry, I was looking for a, um, a link. Um, the, the, the guide is a little bit rough right now, but I'll paste a copy into um, both chat and um, uh, IRC uh, for both the Seagate uh, beta uh, URL that you can use as well as the um, HackMD document that uh, we started writing and that George Neville Neal has um, uh, been contributing been, uh, to. Editing and uh, revising. Sorry, trying to do two things at once. Because um, I wanted, I had hoped to have these pastes ready to go, and I lost the screen. I thought I had them on. Um, so uh, we expect to roll that out um, end of July or in August. There's a number of other things we need to do. We need to coordinate with the security officer to get security updates um, in the new system. We need to coordinate with the release engineer so he can cut releases out of Git um, rather than out of uh, Subversion. FreeBSD update needs to migrate as well. Um, right now we do all of that out of Subversion. And in fact, we do that out of um, a user uh, area of the subversion tree for a prior security officer. So we'll probably be migrating that to get um, to keep track of it uh, in a better way and to make it easier for uh, different people to um, collaborate uh, on these um, on these things. Um, there were a couple of questions this morning that I think I'll just go ahead and cover now because uh, they were interesting. One of them was a question about having a monotonically increasing uh, number that we could tag the system with right now. One of the big advantages of subversion is that um, you can say, I have changed 32,783. Um, do I have the fix? And it's just a number that you can compare greater than or less than and know whether or not you have the fix incorporated into your tree or not. Um, and there are a number of different ways that we can uh, deal with that. Microsoft has added to recent versions of Git uh, caching of this information on the different uh, commit nodes so that if you check it out, you can easily query for how quickly or how far it is from a particular branch. Um, there are other projects that are using this to um, identify, and we're looking at ways that we might be able to use that um, as well. Uh, um, and the other question that was asked was, um, what about having a Git client in the main tree? The current Git that's out in the uh, world is one that is GPL'd, and we're trying to move away from GPL. And there are a number of different options. Uh, when we first started this, we uh, had really thought that uh, package source would be, or sorry, package base would be further along than it is uh, right now, and that it would be no big deal to pull in a uh, uh, Git package. So um, there are a number of interesting uh, contenders, but they need to be ported to FreeBSD. Um, but we may just make those available as uh, packages. Um, that's something that's a little bit up in the air right now. Uh, and uh, finally, there was a question about uh, Fabricator and moving the Git repository to Fabricator so that it could maybe even be the source of truth. And that's actually something that the Git team um, hadn't thought of and hasn't looked into. And that's why we are socializing these things, so that people can point out areas that we might have missed. So we'll be figuring out um, what 
um, moving to Git means for uh, Fabricator. The other thing that um, we announced earlier today was that there'll be a uh, entire office hour session focused on Git in two weeks as these things have become more nailed down, as the preliminary documents become more refined, and as we're approaching the final um, repository uh, cutover so that people can do uh, their tests um, in the repository. Uh, to make sure that uh, you know, we've not missed anything and that they're still able to do their workflows and, and so forth. So that's, um, I guess, in a brief nutshell, uh, what's going on with Git. Um, are there any questions I can answer? I haven't seen any pop up on IRC, apart from uh, Robbie's uh, very good observation that uh, we need to have the manual in place well in advance and the um, repository for people to use it so that people can uh, get up to speed more quickly. Hopefully, the way that we're doing this makes it easier for people that are already familiar with Subversion um, to make the transition. The, the guide certainly will be written um, in part from that point of view. Um, but if you run into the difficulty, we would love to hear, um, you know, we'd love to hear about it so that we can make it better for everybody. Um, so having said all that, are there any questions that I can uh, that I can answer or that come to people's minds that are um, watching this. One, I would just like to add, like, uh, ask, like, whether if uh, is there any like uh, definitive plan, like, when we are going to move towards Git, or if, or is there any possibility that it's going to affect the 2.2 release? Yeah, the the plan is um, we consulted with the release engineer, and um, we have a window. Um, that closes sometime in August um, for transitioning to Git. Uh, and we've been working with him to make sure that we can have all of these pieces in place before then, ideally as much as we can before then. We had been targeting the end of July, but as we've started to roll this out into beta testing, we've uh, discovered more um, pieces that we need to fill in and uh, get people working on. Uh, such as the FreeBSD update and the fabricator issues. So um, that may push us back a couple weeks into August, um, which still gives us time to not impact the 12.2 release. Um, the, if we can't hit the 12.2 release, it'll be like November before we can cut over. And we'd really, really, really like to avoid that if at all possible. Right now, it's looking good um, that we'll be able to cut over. Um, there might be a few more bumps than we might like, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to, to get those ironed out before um, the release, which is why we've been talking to the release engineer and security officer and, and, and others to make sure that um, any issues that they have, they have a chance to raise sooner rather than later. So um, we've not published a committed timeline, but we have a firm timeline that's um, the summer, end of July, first part of August is when we hope to do the cutover. Um, we also, as part of that, one of the things that we may need to do is um, uh, Baptiste in the Seagate uh, jail is running a subversion exporter as well so that people who have scripts and so forth can transition to get um, when it suits them rather than when the project needs it. Um, only the project developers will have to cut over right away. Um, there's a couple of um, things that he's looking into um, around that um, with uh, version numbers that uh, he's trying to iron out. So th those are the plans that we have right now, and that's the status. Um, are there any other questions I can answer? We could not have any questions, but thanks for, for the insights and details about the Git transition. Oh, you bet. So uh, we'll move towards the general question section. So far, we have we have only one question. That's uh, I think here towards Mark. So Mark, do you have any thoughts about this? Um, yeah, I'm quite, um, I guess a couple of high level points are that you know I mean I I started working on FreeBSD by accident because the company I worked for used FreeBSD and had an OS team and I was interested in working on OS. 
systems. Um, so it was, it was purely luck. And um, I think a lot of <clears throat> newcomers to FreeBSD, a lot of new developers, you know, are, are young people starting their career in, in those kinds of companies. Um, or at least the, the, the potential for, for you know, a lot of new developers is to, is to come in that way. Um, so I think it's, it is, you know, it's super important that we continue to make it easy for, for new companies to build products based on FreeBSD or to use FreeBSD in some capacity, because a lot of people are exposed to it through work. Um, the other major thing I'll, I've been thinking about a lot lately is, is you know, the, the role of committers in FreeBSD. Um, in my experience, most committers tend to have their own things that they're working on. And, you know, so, some of them are, are very good at bringing in new people and mentoring them into the project. Um, but we don't have a lot of people who spend a significant amount of time, you know, reviewing other people's contributions and helping them make, helping make them better, right? Um, so we, we I, I don't think, have more than a handful of people that spend significant amounts of time on, on you know, code reviews and bug triage and, and those sorts of, uh, for lack of a better word, janitorial types of work that are really important to bringing new people to the project. Um, I, I try to do that kind of stuff as much as possible, but I find it difficult to balance you know, my, my commitments with, with that sort of open-ended work. Um, so I think in the long run, um, uh, having, having more people uh, committed in some way, maybe through you know, sponsorship, of some sort to to a role of maintainership um, would be would be very beneficial in the long term for the project. Um, yeah, I, I think th those are the two sorts of things that, that come to mind uh, immediately when I when I think about that topic. There's there's you know obviously a ton of things that we could that we could do to to make um, for DC an easier place to build one's career, but. Yeah, I think I think staying attractive to to companies, to, to commercial users, and um, you know, making it easier to find someone experienced within the community who's willing to take a look at your patches, or, or give you suggestions on what to look at, um, and and let you sort of learn at your own rate. Uh, I, I think that's that's very important. Thanks, Mark. Uh, we have another question in the IRC. Uh, are there any changes on the horizon for how ports are handled? There probably will be. Um, initially, the um, Git conversion will be um, very similar to how ports are done today. However, there's a lot of people in the ports community that want to uh, transition to more of a pull request model um, because that fits with what they've been doing with imperfect tooling uh, to date. Um, so that's uh, one of the changes that we are is in the planning stages right now. Uh, won't be in phase one of the Git cutover, but something that's uh, uh, anticipated and desired. We've had some conversations with different people in the ports manager team, um, and you know they've expressed uh, that desire as well. Thanks, Warner. I guess speaking of different things that are come up, um, um, Sergio reached out to me this morning. One of the things that is also happening that didn't get a lot of attention, but I think is really significant actually, is, is the work that's being done to port our, some of our docs and articles over to Hugo and ASCII doc. And um, he's, uh, Sergio is actually starting to investigate porting the Git um, primer over to Hugo and ASCII doc. And so we'll be, you know, that'll also be a, both an interesting avenue for soliciting um, contributions, but also making sure that we've got, you know, the feedback in a low friction way so that people can, can get their, their corrections, changes, suggestions, whatever, uh, fed back in pretty easily. Thanks, John, for the insights. 
And, and there was a follow up um, asking about uh, keeping uh, ports uh, updating fixes uh, more quickly. Um, as as we move to Git, I suspect that that will be, make it be uh, easier as the ports manager uh, group can tweak whatever workflow to help optimize uh, optimize things like that so that um, they are handled more quickly. So that's what's going on. Are there other questions? I don't think there are any questions. Maybe we should wait a couple of minutes. I think we are already near one hour. Uh, Alan, do you want to uh, talk about the upcoming bug squash? Uh, I can, I guess. Uh, so Tom Jones uh, incited uh, this idea. Uh, so yeah, on Saturday, starting at 1400 UTC, which is, I think, 10 AM on the East Coast, uh, a bunch of us are going to gather up on the live stream similar to this um, and the IRC channel and start working on trying to triage uh, some of the bugs in Bugzilla uh, and also maybe looking at reviewing some um, of the patches in Fabricator that uh, don't have anybody assigned to them yet and so on. Uh, and just in general, trying to uh, make progress there. Part of it is we uh, found that when somebody reports a bug, if we if there's extra data we need, if we ask for that in a timely enough manner, we tend to get a response. But if it's too much later, we don't. Uh, and so that can help there. And even just, you know, if someone has submitted a patch, if we can get uh, some feedback to them in a reasonable amount of time, it tends to increase their engagement. Uh, and so trying to apply lessons learned from previous hackathons, like the one that Edmast organized uh, in Kitchener after BSD Can last year, uh, that Mark Johnson helped run. Um, applying some of the lessons we learned there uh, to what will be an online event this time uh, and trying to get the most out of it that we can and try to get as many people involved as we can because, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, bugs open in Bugzilla. <laughs> something, something, tooling, friction, workflow, something, something. Yeah. So, Alan, uh, just one question: Like, is it going to be only uh, for the source tree, or we are going to squash the bugs for all sorts docs and ports? Uh, definitely, we'll be trying to do all of them. Uh, I think you know, there's definitely a bunch of ports people planning to to help out, uh, and I'm going to try to do some doc ones as well. Uh, so, yes, uh, we're hoping to get people from all the teams uh, and you know, both developers and contributors and new people, uh, and try to get. Uh, as much as we can done. Okay, thanks, Alan. So I think uh, we are, uh, sorry, someone is. OK, I think uh, we are near the end of our session today. So uh, thanks to everyone. And uh, mostly, we try to announce our office hours through uh, mailing list, which is announced at freebrt.org. So if you want to stay tuned about our next office hours, please subscribe to the mailing list announced at freebrt.org. And thank you all for joining these office hours. There's also a thank you. Google Calendar we've been trying to manage to make it uh, easier to get reminders about the office hours. Uh, so if, if you prefer that, that's uh, there's a link to it on the wiki page.